In this lesson, we are going to look at some of the wireless security risks, including vulnerabilities, threats, and attacks. We will revisit some of the things that we talked about, like Mac spoofing. We will talk about things like common wireless local area network attacks, including eavesdropping, man in the middle, cracking, phishing, and social engineering attacks. So the objective here is to learn about wireless local area network security threats and vulnerabilities and common wireless local area network attacks. So let's get started. Almost every business provides wireless networks. So it's become not only a personal convenience, but a real business requirement to secure the wireless network. Wi-Fi networking sends radio transmission signals through the air. And it's convenient because end-user devices don't have to be plugged into a wall jack to gain network access. But with this convenience comes potential threats. Unfortunately, there are also vulnerabilities and Wi-Fi threats. Both existing threats and new vulnerabilities are being discovered, and malicious actors are always on the leading edge, exploiting those vulnerabilities, both old and new. A vulnerability is a weakness within an asset, and that can be exploited by a threat. So if there are no vulnerabilities, there are little chances that a threat can exploit the asset. Some vendors offer bug bounties where anyone discovering a vulnerability can report it and get rewarded. Some bodies have decided to make a database of discovered vulnerabilities. Now this whole process was designed and developed by the MITRE Corporation. It's their methodology to allow you to describe in a comprehensive manner that can be easily understood by everyone. Any vulnerability you discover in a system. CVE is the abbreviation for Common Vulnerabilities and Exploits. Basically, there have to be mechanisms whereby two parties can discuss vulnerabilities in a comprehensive and easily understood manner. As an example, if I simply tell you that a particular website is vulnerable to cross-site scripting, it really doesn't tell you a lot because there are quite a few different vulnerabilities that can lead to that same issue. CVEs allow us to more effectively describe specifically what we mean by a particular vulnerability. This whole process was designed and developed by the MITRE Corporation. It's their methodology to allow you to describe in a comprehensive manner that can be easily understood by everyone. Many vulnerability scanning tools will report vulnerabilities related to specific documented CVEs. Now, the National Vulnerability Database keeps vulnerabilities listed by CVE. So if you go there and you look up, say, vulnerabilities with cross-site scripting, you will find them listed, different ones, by their CVE number. Now, every CVE description will keep an identity, an ID. That's a number so that you can uniquely identify that particular vulnerability. It will also report a description, which is just a textual description of what this vulnerability is. That is, what it means to a particular system. And in some cases, you might get some suggestions for remediation. And then a reference, usually to some website where this CVE has been documented. Now, this is one approach to vulnerability management and description one you should be familiar with because it is so commonly used. NIST, or National Institute of Standards and Technologies, maintains another database that is the National Vulnerability Database, or NVD. This is from the NVD website. The NVD is the U.S. Government Repository of Standards-Based Vulnerability Management Data Represented Using the Security Content Automation Protocol, SCAP. This data enables automation of vulnerability management, security measurement, and compliance. The NVD includes databases of security checklist references, security-related software flaws, misconfigurations, product names, and impact metrics. The NVD performs analysis on CVEs that have been published to the CVE Dictionary, 
NVD staff are tasked with the analysis of CVEs by aggregating data points from the description. The NVD builds upon the information included in CVE entries to enhance the information provided. NVD provides advanced search features so you can search by OS, vendor name, product name, etc. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, is another agency in the United States. It provides extensive cybersecurity and infrastructure security knowledge and practices and shares knowledge to enable better risk management. The CISA may assign a number that starts with VU, hashtag, and then the number to a vulnerability. Now, this agency sends out regular bulletins by email alerting enrollees to newly discovered vulnerabilities. The information which comes on a regular basis is important for pen testers to be aware of. You can search for information on these websites for CVE details. Risk probability is the likelihood of a risk occurring, which will generate an impact if the risk occurs. The more likely something is to happen, the greater the risk. The greater the impact, the greater the risk. So once you know the risk, you can decide if you want to protect against it. As an example, let's say you use a simple PSK on your wireless network. So let's consider two situations. In situation one, for example, in a hospital, customer health details and credit card information cross the network. Here, the risk is unacceptable. The possibility of someone breaking into the network and stealing information is very likely. So this kind of data breach is totally unacceptable under HIPAA and PCI rules. Now, in situation number two. In a coffee shop, the PSK is written on a chalkboard on the wall. Suddenly, this scenario is no longer such a big deal. So you can see the risk depends on the certain situation. The impact is another factor to calculate. The reason you spend money to protect yourself is that the result of an earthquake or a hurricane could be high, both financially and physically. The impact of an event also needs to be planned for. The impact can be measured as technical impact or business impact. And when we talk about technical impact, that may include loss of confidentiality, integrity or availability. And the business impact may include loss of money, reputation, compliance, and privacy. To determine the risk and impact of a vulnerability, you can refer to the National Vulnerability Database, NVD, to glean information. Not only the wired networks have threats, and they have security issues, but it is the wireless network which is also prone to multiple types of threats, and, of course, then there are various types of mitigation methods that can be used. So let's look at some of these threats and how they can be mitigated. You should have security policies in place to enforce complex passwords and acceptable use of devices. The idea behind compliance is simply whether you as an administrator feel that the device meets certain requirements to be considered safe. For instance, you want to enforce the use of a password or restricted devices that have not gotten the antivirus installed, or maybe you determine that the minimum operating system version has to be say, version X, or maybe the device itself must be under some kind of threat level threshold. Then you can either allow or prevent its use. So this really isn't based on the user's identity or conditions that are being met. It just comes down to certain settings that need to be in place or certain options that need to be available on that particular device before it can be considered to be compliant.
Over time, more malicious users will know how to take advantage of known vulnerabilities, so your security holes grow over time. One great countermeasure is to make sure these things are patched periodically. Vulnerabilities get discovered over time with both firmware code and software. Patching can fix security and stability problems that are discovered. So when we decide that we're going to deploy patches, especially on a larger scale, we need a way to monitor that patch deployment to ensure it succeeded. We also should have an enterprise class solution that allows us to monitor for patch compliance so that any given moment we can run a report to see which devices on the network do not comply with the latest patches and therefore present a security risk. Patching is just one step of managing security vulnerabilities. Patch management is a plan for managing important upgrades for all the software and technologies that a company uses internally or distributing to clients. Patches are often security related, although they can also be focused on correcting other functional deficiencies or even applying important features, specifically security features. Regular patching and upgrades helps to prevent vulnerabilities. So keep your systems up to date with the latest relevant patches and upgrades. This includes wireless devices, firmware, router operation systems, as well as patches for any third-party vendor software being used. One of the most common immediate actions in securing a network is to implement a quarantine for an unrepaired or compromised system. What happens if a device is attempting to connect to the network and is found non-compliant by network access control? There is a system of quarantine that NAC follows. Then the device is put into a quarantine state in which there are remediation servers which ensure that the non-compliance issues are fixed on the non-compliant device. Then comes enforcement. Now, if a device that is attempting to connect to the network is found to be non-compliant with the defined security policy, the NAC that exists on the network must restrict the device access to the network, which means till the time the device comes into the fully compliant state, it will not be able to access the network. Most networking devices these days can maintain log files, but they will of course vary with respect to the information they report which is typically based on the type of device and the activities they can record. One important fact to note about log files, however, is that in most cases, they do not proactively inform you about anything. So in other words, it's up to you to examine the log files manually to be able to ascertain any information. Each device on the network, each desktop, laptop, server, router, firewall, access point, switch, would generate logs. Now, the idea is to aggregate those logs and correlate the data for multiple devices. Just imagine if you have hundreds of servers, 50 switches, 10 routers, three firewalls, and maybe 50 access points on network. Is it humanly possible for someone to just go and sort, you know, review the logs on each one of these devices or the servers? It's not going to be possible, right? So what do you do? You have a system in place something like SIEM or Security Information Event Management. Now, the SIEM can help you aggregate and correlate data from multiple devices. Now, you do not have to go to each and every one of these devices and review the logs. SIEM will pull these logs, combine them, and some of the latest SIEMs in the market they also help you detect security threats from the review of these logs or the correlation of these logs into them. One of the responsibilities that is often tasked to a security personnel is the analysis of network traffic. There's a wide array of tools available out there for performing this kind of work. The key with a lot of network traffic analysis tools is placement. Are you placing it where it can see all of the network traffic it needs to see? Now you can also analyze traffic using tools like Wireshark and you can save the capture file so that you can analyze it at a later time or you can forward it off to someone with the expertise and ability to analyze it. And there are 
even some free websites where you can upload a packet capture file and it will identify any anomalies. Using Wireshark to capture network traffic is very useful so that you can learn about what's on the network, which in turn could tell us what perhaps should not be on the network any longer. It also allows us to identify traffic patterns, potentially identify any security issues such as intrusions on the network. It does allow us to increase the performance of the network and so on. So you can also filter traffic as it's captured, or you can filter it after it's been captured, which is then called a display filter as opposed to a capture filter. 